Hey guys, Dylan here, the Ecom Lion, and today we are going over that thing, you already know what it is. That nasty online store speed. You may look at your score and go, how do I have 16? You may have jumped on Facebook even and, and seen people going, it's not real, Shopify just wants more money off you. Spoiler, it is real. Everything about it is real. It's actually a Google product, it's not Shopify. Shopify don't want more money off you this way. But today, in today's video, we are going to teach you how to understand what the speed score actually is. We're going to assess the damage and then fix it. Everything is free, there's no paid apps. So let's go. How do we understand what the speed score actually is? So the first thing you want to do is click online store. Then under the old theme box, you're going to scroll down and click view report. You're then going to click see how your score is calculated. This is going to pull three different metrics. So you have your home page, your product page, or your most popular product page, I should say, and your most popular collection page. Google is then testing those three different pages. They're giving them a score, they're then pulling the average of those three numbers and giving your store a total score, which happens to, in this case, be 16. Now, um, if you're like me and you're a dropshipper and you have a one product store, the most important metric is actually your product page. If that's the page that all your advertising is targeting to, it actually doesn't really matter what your home page score is. It really doesn't matter what your collection page score is. It's your product page, which is the most important. So you want to click view insights and it's going to pull up a report. From here, there's one thing you have to check and that is to make sure that it's actually pulling the product which you are testing and advertising right now. So you need to make sure that that is the page which is being analyzed. So the way you do that is you just grab that URL, you chuck it into this box, you click analyze, it's going to pull the report. So once you have the correct page up here, you'll get a total score. Now you want to run it about three times and get a rough idea of what the score actually is. The reason why you do that is because any sort of page speed software and anything that analyzes um, pages and websites in terms of speed and optimization, they all are actually done from servers. There's not someone sitting there going, oh, user 3269 wants me to look up my website and they type it in there and they you know it's not it's not it's not what's happening we all know that right so it's a it's a server which is actually pulling your speed it's testing your site and the problem with servers are servers aren't real users so of course servers can have issues in, in different scenarios servers can have errors they can be um, overloaded there could be heaps of people trying to test their websites right now this is why i say analyze it three times the next thing you want to do is pull up gtmetrics.com the links for this are down below all you have to do is once you open it up check in your your, your uh, url click test your site it's going to pull up a report like this and you may look at this and you may go oh I've got a score of 91% and a why so score of, of C. That's pretty good. Why, why does Google say my website's so slow? It's, it's lying. Everything looks good here. Yeah, not really. What you actually want to look at is this here. It's your fully loaded time. And this is telling you roughly, hey, it's taking 11 seconds to load this particular page. That's, that's not good. 11 seconds is a long time. I would sit here with you for 11 seconds right now to show you how long it is, but... So that was just six seconds and that was already awkward. So imagine 11. People are going to ditch that page before they even let it load, okay? So what you want to do here is retest. Click it again. Same as before, you're going to test it three times to get a rough idea of how long your website actually takes to load. So I've gone and ran three different tests. I've ran them on Google. I've pulled my mobile scores, which were 20, 16, and 15 for an average of about 17 and I've ran my GT metrics and I've gone, okay, it's taken 10.9 seconds, 11.7. The third one was 6.7, which just shows how much servers change um, for an average of about 8.5 seconds. So from here we're going, hey, it takes about 8.5 seconds to load and the average score of my product page is 17. We're going to increase both of those today. The green zone, the sweet spot, is anywhere around six seconds for GT metrics. If you can get your three scores around six seconds, you're sweet. You've optimized it. Things are looking good. There's probably not too much more you can do. Um, and then our scores, we're going to try and increase it, increase it to anywhere. Anything over 30 is good. We are not going to get near 100. It's just not possible. Um, but anywhere over 30, you will instantly see Google and Shopify will say, hey, your speed is actually similar to other websites, which is what you want. Now, that brings us to our last point, and that is how do we fix the damage? How do I do it, Dylan? 
Great question. So I've come up with six different steps which are going to help us increase your scores today and we're going to do it completely for free. So the first one is to be very wary of speed optimization apps. If you go on the app store and you type in fix my site, speed up my site, you install an app, your scores don't change. The reason for that, and it is actually written in the fine print of all of the apps, and that is that how these optimization apps work are through second click. So what that means is when you go on a website and you hover over retest, what the app is doing is it's starting to preload that second page, anticipating for you to click on this link. But that doesn't help us because 90% of our users are coming on our website for one page. They're there to see your product and they're probably going to bounce and never leave. If they, if they go to the cart, that's fine. The cart page loads quickly anyway. There's not much data on there. So the, what the app actually does is it actually slows down your site further because then you're putting more JavaScript into your website and it's just creating worse speeds for everyone and as well worse scores for you so be very wary of them don't stress you don't need it it doesn't really help that much which brings us to our next point and that is to ditch the apps you have to be very brutal on yourself here go into your app page have a look see what's there now this website here that i'm using as a demonstration it currently uses debutify um which I'm not promoting in any way. I actually don't, I'm not a huge fan of it personally, but um, this was a test store that I was doing to test out Debutify. And I've already combed through most of what's here. But you look at your apps and you go, what do I actually need? What's actually helping convert? Are the pop-ups which are popping up and saying, Dylan from Wisconsin or New Zealand bought this product. Is that actually helping your conversion rate or is it actually looking a bit scammy? Is the countdown timer or the shaking at to cart button, is that making my site look better or is it making it look more scammy? You have to weigh up things and go, what is actually helping my website and what is helping them convert? Because that is the goal at the end of the day. That's it. Is this particular app helping me convert? If it's not, ditch it, get rid of it. So as we go through these apps here, um, instantly, the first thing you would want to do if you do use a theme, that's the why I'm using this as, as an example. If you use Debutify, if you use Turbo, whatever, they typically have apps installed into their theme. So you then have to go into the Debutify theme app or whatever your theme is and then start removing the additional add-ons, um, which is what they might may call them. But then you come back to your main apps and you go, okay, what can I get rid of here? The first thing is live chat. Ask yourself, are people actually reaching out? Am I getting hundreds of messages a day on live chat? Are, people, are, are so many people actually using this function to get in touch with me that I should keep it? Or if I remove it, are people still going to find another way to get in touch if they need to? I love to or live chat, don't get me wrong, but as soon as I removed it, I saved about one to two seconds in pure speed just because of how long it took to load. It's really this simple. You just have to go through the apps and decide what you need and what you don't need. So now I go, okay, page speed optimizer. This is what we were talking about just before. We, we know we don't need this anymore. I'm going to delete it. Everything else here is actually okay. Clavio email marketing, that's not going to slow down actual conversions. Actually, it helps conversions through retargeting campaigns. So yes, I should keep it. Um, Printful print on demand. If I was doing a uh, print on demand store, yes, of course I need this app. If I'm not doing it or I only have one product or an old product, that, that use this particular app and I no longer need it, ditch it, get rid of it. Which brings us back to our third point, and that is to assess the waterfalls. Now jump back into your waterfall, which you can find on GT Metrics. You scroll down, you click waterfall, and as you scroll down, it's going to show you what's actually causing your site to load slowly. So from this um, particular page, the first thing I notice is, is this GIF here. So I would if I was uh, trying to optimize this site, the first thing I'll do is get rid of this GIF. You have to, again, ask yourself, is this GIF actually helping people convert, especially at 2.29 seconds? That GIF takes almost three seconds to load. Is, that, is it really worth a three second wait time for this one particular GIF? Is it actually helping them convert? I would argue no. I would then download that GIF. I'd make it into a video. I'd upload it as a YouTube video. Suddenly, um, if I had a headline saying how to use this product, and then you have a YouTube video below with essentially what the GIF is inside that video, suddenly it looks a lot more credible. Suddenly it looks a lot more genuine, and it doesn't affect your page speed. So yeah, ditch the GIF. Get rid of it. You're then going to click JavaScript, and it's going to show you all the JavaScript which is slowing down your page. Every single app you download is going to use some form of JavaScript. And instantly from this, I'm going, okay, 
So I've got a Klaviyo here, which is slowing down a little bit here. Um, I've got a Shopify product customizer, which is the Printful app we were talking about before. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure Tidio Live Chat is in here somewhere. Um, I've already removed it, which, oh no, there it is there, Tidio Live Chat again. So if I remove just those apps which we were talking about before, suddenly all of this load time disappears and my site will finish loading here instead of finishing loading here. Again, this will increase your score, this will increase your page speed, and will also give you more conversions. That's really what it comes down to. Now, you may go, hey Dylan, but I've, I've deleted the apps um, and nothing's really changed. What you have to do is really dive into your code. And this is where apps get a little bit naughty and they actually get away with this. And I actually don't think it should be allowed on Shopify. I think apps should have to remove their own code, but they don't. So what you have to do is, if I delete Teddy or live chat, I then actually have to go online store, I have to go into my themes, and I have to go and edit that code. And it is a manual process, so every single app you've ever added in the past, if you haven't actually gone and manually removed the code from the app, even after you've deleted the app, um, it will still be slowing down your website. So what you want to do is you want to come, especially to this theme.liquid file, and you just want to scroll through and actually see if there's anything that stands out as something which is slowing down your website in terms of an older app. So, you know, I've got Luke's reviews here, for instance. If I'm not using Luke's reviews anymore, say I deleted it, which actually I did, it wasn't on my app page, I need to go through and I need to remove Luke's. So I would come down here and I'll delete Luke's from here and I'll, I'll go control F and I'll type in Luke's and anywhere I could find Luke's, I would remove it. Instantly, that's going to remove that JavaScript from the page and it's going to speed things up. Um, and again, this is what you want to do for every single app that you've added in the past. If you've added heaps, as you come through this page, you'll probably notice quite a few in there. Um, what I would recommend doing though is either to take a copy of this page before you start editing it or to just do one at a time. Just do it very slowly because you don't want to delete too much. If you're not familiar with this, just do it slow. Just remove the code which isn't related to your website anymore um, and just be methodical about it. And if you do make a mistake, just remember you can, can click older versions and then you can go back to a, an older version of your theme file. It just means you will have to start that deleting process again. So the way I like to do it is I like to remove one at a time, click save, go and test my site, just make sure everything's still working perfectly. Um, another place you can find these sort of files are in your header header.liquid if you scroll through your header.liquid you may just find it's not typically in here but every now and then you may find something in here which has been injected from one of your apps as well as your footer.liquid sometimes they inject it at the bottom of the footer um, just to have the app uh, firing on those pages the last page you want to check is your product template page now no matter depending on what um, theme you're using you'll have different options but i would go through your product pages if you get this, I found this happening quite a bit on Shopify recently, where you click on a, a, a piece of code to edit like a page and you get this just blank page. The way you fix it is you just refresh. It's, it's annoying. I don't know why it does it, but it's how you fix it. So here's our product page again. I'll just again scroll through, just make sure there's nothing there. Um, everything to be honest is looking pretty good. The first thing that I noticed is Luke's reviews though. So again, if I was getting rid of Luke's reviews, I would ditch it from here. So again, just be methodical, go through your pages, just make sure all of your old apps, which you have deleted are gone and instantly, instantly that is going to uh, increase your speed. The next thing you want to do is what is called defer JavaScript. This isn't, um, it's not as scary as it sounds. It's really easy. Essentially what it means is when you first load your page uh, or your website, how it works is your computer is trying to interpret every single line of, line of code. So when it comes across a JavaScript file, it's then loading that JavaScript file in the order that everything is loaded. But maybe, for instance, maybe your live chat, or maybe if you have uh, font awesome icons, for instance, which I think I do here. Yep. Maybe I go, actually, I don't need the icons to load straight away because I actually want the people to load the page as quickly as possible. I want them to see the content. I want them to see the photos first. The icons can load later. So the way you do that and the way you defer it or put it near the end, is, 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 as it's done here, um, you literally just go defer equals defer. The other way you can do it is you just find a JavaScript file. So say you find an app, whether it's the Tidio live chat app, or maybe it's an app that you've added on, find the JavaScript for it. So I'm going to do it for the font awesome icons here. 
and you just come to the end of the code and you literally just write defer. That's that's it. It's really as easy as that. Um, or you can go defer equals defer. Both work, both do the trick. Um, and what that means is instead of this particular icon or the font awesome icons library loading at the start of the page and start of, I'm really struggling to describe this. Instead of it loading at the beginning of the website, it's now going to load at the end, which doesn't affect anything because your user's not gonna go into go, where's the icon? <laughs> I mean, we're talking three to four seconds here. If you just load it at the end, it loads your content a lot quicker, which is what you want. So once you've deferred JavaScript, once you've ditched all the apps, you've del deleted the ones that you don't use anymore, you've gone through and removed all that code which was left over, the last couple of things you want to do um, is number one, if you do use font awesome icons, the only thing I would recommend is potentially look into that. Uh, what I have found personally from personal experience is I, I love the icons, but if I use the free plan, how the free plan works is it actually downloads every single icon into a JavaScript file in case you do use it. Whereas I think the paid plans, how it works is it actually only pulls the icons that you are using, which is going to save a lot of time because you can imagine how long a JavaScript file takes to load if it has tens of thousands of icons to, to download opposed to three or four. The last thing though, and it sort of actually is similar to that, is image compression. Um, this is very, very important. This is the one scenario where I would say, yeah, you should get an app for this because there are plenty out there. And what it does is it goes and takes all of your images which you've uploaded. They then compress those images, make them as small as possible without reducing the quality and they re-upload them for you automatically. It just saves a lot of time. If you do want the free method, the free method is just to go through, uh, pull all your images down from your website. You can just Google compress images online. If you don't have Photoshop, you literally just come onto a website like this, compressjpeg.com. This was just one I've quickly Googled. Um, I've never actually used it, but you just upload the images again, download the compressed versions, re-upload them to Shopify, and instantly your website will load quicker. If you do need any help at all, leave a comment below, reach out to me, give me a yell, give me a shout. I'm happy to help you out. Um, subscribe, like. If you don't, it's... <laughs> I was about to say it's all Gucci, but that would be the worst thing to... I don't know even know where that came from. It's all good if you don't subscribe. I get it. Um, but, you know, if you do want some help, just reach out below. And until next time, see you later. Go hustle, eh? Thank you.